This is wine. Wine is special because it takes very long to mature. This is the Range Rover. It's special because, well, it did take much longer to mature, but it has the reputation, it has the heritage, it has the luxury, it has, well, those can go on forever. However, this particular Range Rover costs 130,000 euros. The base price for them, the starting price for them, are 90,000 euros. You guys will now think, oh, that's money not well spent. That's too expensive. I beg to differ though. I think this is uh, money well spent. And I'm gonna tell you guys in a moment why. Let's do this. Did you know that Range Rovers also come with hybrid engines? I sure do. And now you all do know this. Hybrid engine for days. Let's talk about the exterior. What I absolutely love about this Range Rover is how they managed to preserve the identity. It's amazing. It's become more aerodynamic over the years, as you can see. What I absolutely like is how they have those, the, the layout of this front headlight. It's just nice, very nice. The Range Rover started off as an off-road luxury vehicle. Well, actually, it was just a simple SUV before, in the 70s, or shall I say 60s, late 60s. Then, it evolved into a luxury vehicle as there were high demands for it. Nobody really cared about off-roading. People started caring a lot about status and driving on road. And now this is where it has landed today. I particularly like the way this alloy wheel is. It's very nice. I, I love the design, this particular design. And I like how it has a two-tone aspect to it. It's like here it's lighter, and here it's darker. It's, it's very, very nice the way they've done it. And I also really like this linear trim. This, it just goes all the way there. It continues. And then it continues all the way until the front. Let's see where it leads us. Oh, and this is a typical Range Rover identity design. I've seen this in many Range Rovers since the 2000s and I'm very impressed they've uh, still put up with this. It's it's very nice design there. It's uh, although I don't know if it's just me but is it just supposed to be some sort of imitation of a grill side engine exhaust or something? It's something which sports cars usually have. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be an imitation but whatever this trim is it's amazing. I always liked it. It's, well, when If this Range Rover was black and if this trim was in uh, silver, this would have been uh, more uh, aesthetically appealing, actually. But it's amazing the way it is. I absolutely like it. And so that linear trim continues all the way to the headlights. How nice. I like how the bonnet and the, the grills are isolated from each other. It's just like a straight bonnet. And uh, it's, it's quite nice how they've done it. And this time they've sort of integrated the badge into the grill. They have this pattern with the grill. So, moving to the interior. Soft clothes. That's a nice soft clothes there. No need to slam the doors anymore, people. <laughs> so, at this price range, you're not buying a car for its economic values or for its ecologic values. You're buying it purely for the aesthetics. That's right, you heard me, aesthetics. But one thing I also like though, is how there is identity preservation in this car, in this SUV, shall I say. <laughs> uh, I like how you have this linear design that continues just until there. And this is something they used to have always. Now, Range Rover didn't start the first luxury SUV because it was sort of Jeep, the Jeep Wagoneer that started that trend. But I feel like Range Rover does suit in it. It just makes it better. Like, they really did it better. They really did a wonderful job in this because um, they also... They, they, it just suits them. You know, whereas it feels like the Germans, they started this trend of big SUVs purely out of competition. But they did it nice, they did a good job. So, about the interior, I, I like it, but then there's some reoccurring things that sort of bother me a bit. And that is, 
First of all, why does Range Rover put the window buttons right here on the windowsill? Like, wouldn't it be better to hide it, you know, make it cooler somehow? It's, I'm not a fan of having it up there, you know, it's too uh, conspicuous to everyone. But it's okay, I guess, I mean, so because maybe they're used to having people who lean onto the windows like this while driving. It's fine, it's not a big deal. Another prominent problem I've noticed is why exactly did they put the hood hatch right there? The hatch for the engine bonnet. Why did they put it there? Because, I mean, someone's feet can accidentally pull it. I mean, I'm saying this from experience with uh, other cars. Although, they didn't put it that conspicuously. They kind of hid it inside, you know, whereas most car manufacturers have it here. Range Rover has it more inside, which is good. But still, it's like, usually it would be safer to put it somewhere here. But it's okay, it's, it's perfectly fine. Another aspect that sort of bothers me is, why does Range Rover continue on insisting having uh, off-road controls there? Suspension, height, adjustment, uh, well, off-road assistances right there. Like, why? Because, I mean, most Range Rover drivers don't really go off-roading with this, so it's a bit... I don't know why they have it there. I think it's probably just because they have a heritage to uphold, you know, they have a history to uphold. They started from off-roading. So I guess Range Rover has it there as a sort of compliment, as a sort of... to say, uh, look, we are Range Rover, and we, we came from there, and this is where we are today. So no matter how good quality we are, how luxury we are, we still have our off-road values, which is very nice. Another thing that sort of bothers me is why did they resort to having too much screens in here? Like here, here, and here. This is sort of an Audi thing in my opinion. It's like too much touch screens everywhere. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's not a problem at all. But it's just something that sort of... Yeah, just too much touch screens everywhere. And then the trim is not bad otherwise. I like how everything is linear. But yeah, you know, maybe a bit of buttons could have done. But then if you put too much buttons, it'll make it look classic. And this is not what Range Rover wants. I think Range Rover wants to move forward. Another thing is, is it just me or did they get this from Mercedes? Because this is something Mercedes used to do, whereas Range Rover was actually better when they had it here, the seating adjustments. But it's, it's very nice nonetheless. I like it. Oh well, who cares? Having it on the door is also good for Range Rover, isn't it? After all, it's already too busy, so why hide things down there when you could always put it conspicuously up here? Um, and I like how you have a Meridian sound system. So sound enthusiasts, you're gonna love this car. It's gonna feel like a studio for you. Another aspect that's been bothering me is why exactly does Range Rover have this kind of door handle for a car like this? Like, wouldn't it be better to have a door handle like this? I just wonder, like, yeah, that looks very, hmm. It's, it's not particularly good in my opinion because dust can accumulate in there through time. But it's okay, if you do some cleaning and minor maintenance, that should be fine. No dust will set anywhere. And this applies to every car, guys, not just Range Rovers alone. Um, otherwise, it's still good nonetheless. I'm impressed with how they laid everything out. I love it, guys. I love it. Door handle is amazing. Everything feels top-notch. Again, wide door sill which is quite nice, it feels like a table. Oh, guys, you get a nice view of the front by the rear. That's very nice. I'm staying in the rear seats and it's actually quite nice. It's, uh, feels like, uh, feels just as good as the Mercedes S-Class. And I like how the window sill is very wide. I mean, to be honest, of all the cars I've been in, this is the widest window sill I've ever seen. It's very interesting. I don't know what's supposed to be in between, but I'm assuming it's all the, the chassis works and the controls that are in between. That's why it's, yeah. And you have the seating adjustments here. Oh, nice. That's very nice. Huh. Okay, this is bizarre. So you have one button here, but then you have this bit of trim or something that has no purpose whatsoever. I can't do anything with it. Right here. So there's this... It, this uh, area that has no purpose, it's just there. So why does Range Rover have a seat symbol when only this part does something and this part doesn't? I guess it's for visibility, so that when somebody's sitting and it's dark, they can see that this is the seating button, and this is for the lumbar, the back uh, 
the seat, the, okay. And the door locks are here. And then you have the sensor warning to tell you uh, if you can open the door, if the door is safe to open. And the door uh, handle is right there to, well, to open the door. So, it's nice, see? And this glows as you open the door. Um, it's very nice, very nice. Just, I don't know what is this, what's the purpose of this particular bit of trim. And surprisingly, guys, there is no back seat pocket for some reason. Oh wait, there is. Ah, but I spoke too soon. Sorry, I, I spoke too soon. It's right here. Absolutely like also how they lined this uh, this uh, door bin here. It's very nice. Well, door pockets, I'd say. <laughs> it's, it's got some nice material to it. It's very nice. I like it. Oh, look what you get here. Oh, this feels nice. They've lined it with some sort of uh, fabric, guys. That's very nice. And then this is supposed to just be the lighting, although I think in some editions or versions you'd get uh, something written there. I don't know, but it looks like something's supposed to be written there in some editions or versions. Another thing that really keeps me uh, impressed is this particular hand luggage-like uh, handle. I like it. It looks like a luggage handle. It, it's very nice. I love it. And then you have a coat hook here, a coat hook there. It's very nice, and then there's this piece of lighting. Um, I think it's supposed to be just the lighting. Yeah, for sure, lighting system. And then you have panoramic roof. Nice. You also get a lot of storage solutions in this car, you guys. You get this. Oh, nice. Oh, nice, guys. Lots of storage solutions. This reminds me of the Skoda a bit. Huh, that's cool. Oh, well. It's quite nice. A lot of places to hide things. I like how this... Uh, it looks... It doesn't look like a, a storage area. I like this. It's very much disguised. See, this is what I like about the Range Rover, is that a lot of things are blended in. You know, you, you, things are not conspicuous sometimes. Like, yeah. I like it. And this, I think, goes with most luxury brands these days. They really tend to integrate their design a lot, so it's like you can't tell what's a storage area and what not. Now over to the boots. Nice. Very nice. Electric folding seats. How nice is that? And you can adjust the rear of the car, the height of the rear, so up and down. How cool is that, guys? Very nice. Wow. I like the material they've uh, lined it with. Very impressed. I'm very impressed. So, my conclusion about the Range Rover, it's, I think, one of the best luxury SUVs. I really like it, and especially it's good value for its money. 130,000 euros. I think this is good value still, guys because you get a lot of comfort uh, conveniences. This is not meant for performance, but rather for the luxury. Like I've stated, it's like wine. You have to drive it nice and slow in order to enjoy it, in order to actually appreciate the quality and how useful it is. It has a lot of history, it has a lot of heritage, and, and they really have preserved it. I like it. It feels just as good as wine. That's all for today. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and share your thoughts. Uh, now, my personal opinion of the Range Rover, I must say, I really like the car. It's wonderful. It's gorgeous. And, uh, well, if I had to choose between a sports car or a Range Rover, I'd pick the Range Rover hands down, guys. That's right. You heard me. Range Rover for days. Keep it up, Range Rover. You did a good job.